Welcome back. It's still the run-up on uh, Plus TV Africa. The Oshun State Governorship Election tri Petition Tribunal on Friday sacked Ademola Adeleke as governor of the state. And there have been mixed reactions since uh, trailing the news of that judgment with discussion of the matter making waves. What is the implication of the judgment? Can INEC issue a certificate of return to Oyetola? And uh, joining me to discuss this is uh, Tunji Abdul Hamid a member, Kwara State PDP Presidential and a State Campaign Council. Tunji, welcome to the run-up. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Okay, you are a, a PDP member and a member of the Presidential Campaign Council and the State Campaign Council. But you heard the news of Oshun. How did you take the news of the dethronement, if I may say, of Adeleke in favor of Oyetola? Uh, it's not good news as far as I'm concerned because I, don't, I will not expect my party member to lose election. So it's not a good, it's not a good news for me in that regard because uh, the judgment did not, did not go in favor of my, of my candidates. But what if it was some, uh, some other candidate that is not your candidate? Would you have thought the judgment was good enough? Because what elements no, of that judgment do you not no, like, said, apart from the fact that it's affected your, your party member? I have, I, have, I have neither condemned the judgment nor accepted that the judgment was okay. I have not said that. I only said that it's painful to me. It's sad that uh, the judgment did not go in favor of my preferred candidates. Mm. And that's what I just said. I have not condemned or... Or, or accept that judgment was uh, okay or not okay. So please take that correction. Okay. So let's let's just see um, if you if you're looking into the future. Um, do you think that there uh, there is a chance that a delicate can be reinstalled? And if you do think that way, what gives you some kind of confidence to be able to say so? Yeah, I think uh, looking at the argument of both parties the APC and the PDP and the Adeleke, as well as INEC, uh, I think there's a chance for me. Notwithstanding, I'm not preempting the AP. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the AP itself now. I'm not trying to give evidence based on what happened there at the field. I'm just, I'm just talking based on what happened at the, at the tribunal. The, what is the basis of the judgment of the court at the tribunal? The basis was that uh, the, there was a over 40 based on the satisfactory copy of uh, the results given to APC by INEC. So, uh, and they discovered that that was an overvoting. So, uh, and the, the position of IPDP was that, look, there was no overvoting. It was, an, it, 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 it was, it was uh, it, it, plus uh, INEC. INEC and the PDP, they were on the same page to say that, look, there was no overvoting in terms of uh, any, any wrongdoing from their own side. Uh, because uh, you know, if you recall, the election was held on the 16th. And then on the 17th, the APC applied for certified to copy of the uh, uh, results and uh, to which uh, one was given to them. But thereafter, I went, uh, went, went uh, looking uh, into his uh, uh, system, discovered that, that there was an error. In other words, the, the, what I'm saying directly for those who don't understand is that the, the, the CTC relied upon by, by APC was that from the back end. And the one being relied upon by the, by the PDP is a real BFAS itself. So in other words, there's a, there's a conflict between the results on the back, at, the, at the back end and the one from the BFAS itself. In, in other words, probably something has, been, has, has happened. Maybe there's, a, there's been manipulation or there's an error of operation or whatever that has happened in that regard. That, that is the issue we're talking about. The argument is that, look, if you are relying on a, a BFAS, which is the primary evidence, then the primary evidence is not, it, there's no conflict regarding our voting. So there should be no need uh, to say there's an overcutting here. If you look at the uh, uh, secondary evidence, which is secondary evidence in law for lawyers, you know, I'm a lawyer as well, for lawyers, it's only, you rely on secondary evidence when the primary evidence is not available. So the primary evidence in this, in this stance is the BFAT itself. The secondary, secondary evidence is the back end or at the server, uh, which is the one the APC relied on to get what the government they, they, they got now. So based on that, I have the, I have the confidence that the court may that the uh, AP court may think and say, look, you can't rely on uh, secondary evidence when there is a primary evidence of, of, of the results. Okay, so, but... To that uh, extent, I, I have the confidence that it may be overturned. Over 
There were, there were reports that even the INEC um, official also who was testifying, apart from the other one who has affiliation with PDP, uh, the INEC official uh, that was testifying accepted that there was error. And the other witness that was also testifying said that the overvoting, it was not that there was no overvoting, but the, that the overvoting was done in only seven polling units instead of the seven, over 700 polling units uh, that the APC said. So in all, this uh, in all these evidences by the witnesses, there was one thing that was agreed, that there was a problem. Whether you are calling it overvoting, whether you're calling it anything, there was a problem. But based on the fact that there was a problem, no matter the amount of polling units that uh, those kind of things happened, do you th really think, do you still think that if it is looked into, the documents are looked into, your principal, okay, your party man, because it's not your principal directly, your party man will still stand a chance, knowing that there was, as Nigerians will put it, some kind of magu magu in the electoral process? You see, the way it works in court is not, is that it is, it, the witness only answer questions based on what is put to him. And in this, in this instance, if you have a document that shows contradiction, and the document is shown to him to confirm whether, based on the document in your hand, is there any of a voting, will you do a setting to say otherwise? You won't say otherwise, because there's everything, it's clear from the document. So if the document is, there, there's no dispute yet. There's a conflict between the result from the beefers and the one from this, at, the, at, the, at the back end. There's a conflict, there's, a, there's, an, there's, an, there's of a voting evidence for that regard. So the witness is not expected. To see otherwise, you need to confirm based on the document because the lawyer, what would the lawyer will ask him is to look at the document and confirm whether or not, from the face of the document, there's an of a voting. Definitely, we say there is because that is that's what's on the document. So that, that, that's not an issue. On what basis did they say so? So the, what we should be looking at how did they arrive at those documents? Which which of the documents do we do they rely on? Is it the primary evidence or secondary evidence? To me, as a lawyer. The, the, the best evidence, as far as we are concerned, evidence is the primary evidence. So, if you are relying on secondary evidence against the primary evidence, then you are doing the wrong thing. And that, that, that's, what, that's what I'm saying here. So, I will not say because uh, the evidence and the witness says there's an over 14, then he has admitted that. He will definitely admit because if the document put before him shows that. So, he will confirm what is in the document. And that's what he has, probably he has done in that, in that instance. He will merely confirm the document put to him. Look at these documents. From the look at it, uh, from, from, the, from this document, did you see anything? What, what is the result here? What is the result here? The definitely so we will confirm that there's an opportunity. So that, that's not a, for me, that's not a big deal. Okay, um, well, Bio, I, I leave him to you. Um, Ademola Adeleke, they have declared that he didn't win the election and they should withdraw, INEC should withdraw the um, certificate of return and maybe give it to Oyetola, or I don't know how that is going to play out. But uh, the floor is yours, Bayo. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's nice to, to have um, Mr. Abdul Hamid again today. And uh, I always enjoy the, you know, the perspectives that he shares. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, Mr. Abdul Hamid, the, um, the fact is that this judgment that has been given in our legal system, because some people will, will need this, uh, will need a clarification on this, if you can please provide it. Uh, the governor, in uh, uh, the status quo right now, which is that governor, the case governor, although if the court has ruled, the tribunal has ruled against him, um, if he decides to appeal, he remains in office until the appeal process is exhausted. Would that be correct? You are correct, sir. He has, uh, he has 21 days between which to decide whether to appeal or not to appeal. And if he, if he does appeal within the, that, that, that period, he has a, the court of appeal will have 60 days to determine the appeal. Then if any even of them is not satisfied, they also have the right to go to the Supreme Court. They have another 60 days for the Supreme Court to determine whether or not uh, who is right or who is wrong or who is the winner. So he will still remain in office pending when those uh, uh, processes will be concluded. Okay, so I, I'm therefore wondering why, if you see the media reportage, uh, it's like Mr. Dileke has left uh, government house, you know, Shobu. <laughs> Given the way yeah. this story has been reported, is that just trying to sell the, 
the newspapers or what exactly is going on, you know, because that led to yeah. a lot of debate, you know, over the weekend. Uh, one is to sell the papers. Two is that they, they are not lawyers, so they won't know the implication of what they are saying. You know, they will just rely on the what the court says. Court says. Hello, can you, you can you hear me? The case that by is not is that by yes. fact as the governor. So they they were uh, expecting that. Uh, Yamu, can you hear me? Yes. Fact, yes. Go ahead. Uh, Hello, Bayo, go ahead. Bayo wasn't sure whether you could hear him, but go ahead. We can oh, hear I, you. I, I was. I was. I, I had him read. Okay. I, I said that. Look, I, I will not blame the the, the, the judge. It may be probably to sell paper, and secondly, because uh, they are not uh, lawyers and they don't know the implication of the of the judgment or the the, the consequences of, of the judgment itself. The the law is clear. In the law, law is clear. It's clearly stated that once a, 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 a candidate is sat, that candidate will remain in his position pending when the appeal will be determined. It's, it's, it's automatic, except if there's no appeal. If there's no appeal, then automatically it goes. But if there's an appeal, it will have to remain until the appeal is determined. So the, the, the press are trying to sell paper. Secondly, some of them are not are, are mysterious because they, they, and probably thirdly, they are not aware of the position of the law regarding the, that circumstance. But what's the mind of PDP at this point? Because you said the governor has the right to appeal, or Adeleke has the right to appeal, and he has 50 days window uh, to do that. But we haven't heard so far that he has gone to the court already. So what's the mind of PDP? Let's have a, a, an insight to that. What does the party intend to do? What does the governor intend to do? What do we need to know as the next step? I appeal... Appeal is a process, and I'm sure the lawyers are, are, are putting up their papers. It's not something we just uh, uh, say, I, I am appealing. No, you must put up paper together. You must look at the judgment, look at the grant under which you want to appeal. So you must study the judgment first, look, as I said, bring out the grants, then draw out the papers for you to say you are appealing. It's not something, once you appeal process, not to appeal is, is, is faulty, then the entire appeal is gone. So you have to be careful in doing it. It's not something we just rush. It happened in one day, and they are still doing it. So I'm very sure they are working on it day and night to ensure that it's done. But meanwhile, you know, this issue we are talking about here, I, I think INEC is the main, is, is, is the main uh, culprit here. They are the, they are the main uh, uh, culprit. And I think uh, punishing uh, Adeleke for the offense of INEC will be, will be injustice as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Bio, can, can you still hear us? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure, I can hear you. Uh, I hope you can hear me also. Yes, we can hear you. Um, yeah, um, Barrister Abdulhamid. Um, the, the, the role of Divas uh, has been further um, signposted, if you like, by this Oshun election and the verdict of the tribunal. Mm. Is it a complicated machine or is it a simple machine? Uh, I ask this question given the fact that a majority of our people who would vote may not be, uh, not, let me not say majority, some of those who will vote may not be that technologically savvy, okay? So if that machine is complicated, it could be a problem. And even those who will be technologically savvy may not be patient enough, you know, on, on, on the day of the election. And there are other factors that we can, we can consider. So in your view, is this a very simple process, the use of the levers, or do you think it, it's a could be a complicated process. Yeah, I cannot uh, completely answer. I cannot directly answer that question, yes or no, because I, I have not uh, voted when the device was introduced, and I have not uh, seen them use it. So, but I, to me, it should not be a complicated. From what I've been seeing, it should not be a complicated uh, machine. But you must have the knowledge of operating it. If you don't have the knowledge, probably you, you can that, that that issue can happen because you cannot have a particular number on the device itself, and you have another number at the back end. So in the, it shows that something is wrong. Probably those who operated it do, do, not, do not understand how to operate, or probably they, they deliberately want to sabotage uh, the effort, or they want to compromise. Those are the two things that... Uh, so, and it's, it's, it's sad that uh, BFAS are giving everybody hope that our election will not be free and fair because of BFAS. It's not been... Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of fear uh, in town now regarding the 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 the, the beavers because uh, people now realize that look so at at, at long the beavers can be manipulated because that's what they're telling us if you are saying the result from the beavers is even from the one uh, at the at, at, at the back end 
then you are you are saying that something is wrong there. Probably the two, two things is likely to happen. It's either those who are who operated it do, do not understand how to operate it, or there's manipulation somewhere, deliberate manipulation somewhere. So and if that if that is the position, you are giving room for people who is aware that look, once there's a there's an for 40 somewhere, that election will be cancelled. They can go there and, uh, and manipulate. And I'm even told, I'm even worried that we are told that look, there's no way you can vote without beaver's uh, accreditation. So how can we not get uh, over 40? That means people have voted even without a uh, uh, accreditation. Or you are saying they voted without even the voter's card. That is the meaning. Because you said you what we have been told was that there's no that you can't vote without being accredited by beavers. So how do we now get if that is the position? How do we get over 40? So it's, it's, it's either those who are being engaged to, to undo it do not understand how to undo it, or they de deliberately manipulated the, the system to favor a particular uh, person. So, and in this case, we don't know who and who have done the, 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 the damage. So we, we, you, cannot, you cannot now say, because the error was on the person who was supposed to conduct the election, and then you now visited the, the punishment on the, on, on the candidate. I think it, to me it's unfair. No, the the yeah, just a final election. one, Bayer. Just a final yeah. one. There. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. So if it's a final one, then let me just say, INEC is going to test run beavers, so to speak, before the twenty twenty three elections. Um, I think they identified two states where they are going to do a test run and all that. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice? What what should INEC actually particularly focus on in this test phase? Uh, before uh, mock election, sorry, they, they, they call it a mock election, you know, trial. So, what would you like I, I think they, to focus they, they, on? The focus on the people. Are... Sorry, on the light in, in the light of the experience with the Austrian election now. So, what would you want INEC to focus on? Yeah, I want them to focus on the people and then the beavers. They must, they must see whether or not they know how to handle it or they don't know how to handle it. Because I unofficially, before the petition was uh, filed, I heard that upon, upon the when when the when the APC obtained the the certificate copy on the second day of the election, which shows that uh, there was an opportunity. I the, the inquiry we made was well, what was me to understand was that uh, there was a, the, the, there was an error by those who were operating it. That uh, they when when you fold, they need to do something. If you don't do it, you'll be sending messages at, or, or until you press what you are supposed to press. So which means. As you are, this one will be reading 10, the, the DAO is, will, be, will be sending messages to other uh, uh, area that is back end, and then there will be conflict. There's no way. So, probably that's what So, I want them to focus on those who are under the machine to see whether or not they know how this is, how to operate, and to also focus on people who are who are being uh, uh, used as a, a mock uh, voters to be able to know whether or not they are voting correctly or not correctly, and to see whether or not it is possible to bypass. Bypass, uh, by, 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 uh, uh, to, to, to bypass uh, uh, BFAS and uh, and votes without having been accredited. So yeah. I think those are the areas focus on. Yeah, and, and, and sorry, Yambo, just added to this. What about the party agents in each of the police stations? What should those party agents be focusing on regarding the utilization of BFAS? Also, in the light of this experience. Yeah, I, I think apart from the training the uh, the operator. The agents should also be no. They should understand how the, the machine operates, so that whenever they is being used wrongly, they will raise alarm in that in that regard. So the party agents should also be vigilant, to be able to see whether or not the machine are being used the way it should be used, or they are not used. They are not being used in that regard. So which means there must be proper training for those agents as well, either by the party or by whoever that will do it. I don't know, but there must be proper. That, that will be the responsibility of the party to ensure that look your agent understands how the thing works. So the INEC should be looking at the why why INEC is looking at their uh, uh, staff or adult staff or whatever to see whether or not they are able to they know how to operate it very well. The party should also be concerned about the agents, whether or not they will be able to monitor properly okay. or not uh, on how the machine is being uh, okay. uh, used or functioned. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Tunji. Uh, Tunji Abdul Hamid is a member of Kwara State PDP Presidential and T State Campaign Council. Thank you so much for being a part of this show this morning, Tunji. Thank you for having me. Okay, Thank we'll you. take a short break now, and when we return, we'll be talking on other matters, especially as it concerns the Naira swap. Stay with us.